be helpful. Uh, I think we're going to start off. Um, well, Colleen's going to come back up and show us a, a couple of different things. So we've talked about compliance. We know that's something for you. We've talked about customer files with Cindy and how you're collecting and processing and doing some uh, some tasks around that and how you're maintaining that information. Um, talk with Logan about just general overview about what does the software do and how does it function so that you guys can actually see searches, retrievals, information come to life. Is there any specific use cases or ideas that you want to bring up that we need to touch on in this part of the presentation? Anything? Let's keep it generic? Okay. All right, we'll just show you some basics. We'll show you yeah, some basics. Yeah, ask lots of questions. And in order to incent uh, for some questions, I had ordered a few promo items um, related to things that I like. So, uh, a few things about me. I am a evangelist. I'm a mother of two young children. I'm also a yoga enthusiast. So I have some Highland branded yoga stretch pants. <laughs> Doesn't that look nice? Like, ah. You can also use this to um, tie up your yoga mat so it doesn't unravel. Or if you're new to yoga, it can act as an emergency tourniquet, just, you know, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> You can also use it to hit people. Yeah, what a multifunctional. <laughs> yes. And I'm also a big card player. Not necessarily like gambling, you know, cards, not so much poker, but like spades, hearts, euchre, rummy, all those kind of games. I'm teaching my little ones how to play euchre right now. Uh, so it's fun. We're always like looking for a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to show you just a few basics of on base. Please uh, ask any questions that, that come to mind as we go. So as we talked about digital transformation, how can we set up content management to be something new, to be something different? And one of the ways that we can do that is instead of logging into a siloed content management application, even though we know it's connected behind the scenes, why not bring it into applications that users already know and love, such as Microsoft Outlook? Very popular applications include you know, bringing it into the line of business system, whether it's homegrown or purchased. I can be on a transactional screen and click a button and pull up all the related documents in OnBase. So this is Microsoft Outlook, and as you can see at the top, we've simply inserted an OnBase tab into the Outlook ribbon. So whether I'm scanning content in or searching for it or looking at those folders or the dashboard reporting that I saw earlier, um, it's all right here. You know, David, I know you said you were in compliance. We have a very popular application within OnBase that we call Policy and Procedure Administration. So pushing out some of the required materials that people need to read and acknowledge. They can even take a short test along with it. And then you know, you're minimizing the organization's risk and you know, maximizing employee accountability. And then you can get reporting on who's read what and when those policies need to be updated and all that stuff. So we'll start at the beginning with capture. Certainly if we're talking about paper, that's happening on a scanner, likely that's being sent to brainware, but there's also pieces of content that enter the organization via fax, via email, via some sort of electronic transfer, and we have tools to bring that content in. Whether it's in an automated fashion, a very popular application is a tool that we have called Mailbox Importer. Everything sent to greensboroauto.com or contact us immediately flows into OnBase and it's in OnBase, and then the technology starts answering the questions. And then the person gets involved, and it sends those little automated emails. But sometimes it might come into an individual email inbox. For example, this is an HR application, but imagine you need to gather information about a customer, or a vendor, or an account, or a project, any type of entity, and you want that content to be placed in OnBase, we want to identify what it is, and we want to give it some structure. So here we have an email from Sam Hastings. He's an employee, he could be a customer, it, it doesn't matter. The email, we're, we're not gonna worry about the HR application as much as we wanna get the email and that attached document into OnBase so that we can do something with it. Now in our HR scenario, he's filled out an application online, an electronic form posted to the website, not a PDF that you fill out, you scan, but an actual electronic form built an on base that maybe you attach some documents to. In this case, he's neglected, he failed to uh, attach them or there were some follow-up materials and he sent us an email. So one thing we can do in on base to import this content is actually drag and drop it to an Outlook folder. And this is important because this is how we manage our own inboxes. We sort based on project, based on person, based on vendor. 
And if you'll notice over here on the right hand side, I didn't enter a single piece of metadata, yet OnBase was, in, was able to intelligently identify what the content is and information about it. So now we have applied structure to that formerly unstructured content. So we talked earlier when we spoke of Brainware, in some cases Brainware will be at work, this is actually just native OnBase capabilities that you know, can give us this information of why do we care about keywords so much and metadata so much? Well, that's what drives retrieval or search, retention, so we know how long to keep things. Uh, it, it's what drives our reporting. What is the status of different items or the dollar amount of different items? That's actually what drives security around the content. Is it part of this department? Are you a member of that department or that group? So this metadata is vital in order to keep content connected and revised. And you'll see all of the metadata, all the keywords that we were able to capture for free. In OnBase, we actually have these types of keywords down here that begin with a capital M-A-I-L. Whenever something is imported from fax or email, we automatically can capture that content so that you can use it later without you having to do any other configuration other than place these out-of-the-box keyword types on the document or the content type that you create. So in this case, we are going to import our email as a cover letter, just for our example purposes. And then we will actually import immediately. You can see that it, it toggled this document type now to the resume, and it's going to grab this attached document and bring it in. Sometimes you might get an email that has multiple attachments. We even have opportunities to combine those to a single file, so that's easy to scroll through. Or maybe they're individual documents. Either way, behind the scenes, we can be triggering that folder creation. Remember I showed earlier how they create and populate themselves, or they're starting the workflow process, or behind the scenes, we're sending out a notification that says, we have the application and the resume and the cover letter for Sam Hastings, what do you want to do? So we're going back to our different methods of digital transformation all the time. And now that content is in the system. Just to give you another example, that was a little more interactive. You know, maybe the user kind of drags and drops to a folder and we automatically import it, capturing all that same stuff but the user never sees it. I, I showed it to you so you could see the magic, really the computer science, it's not so much magic that's behind the scenes to capture that information. And maybe the user adds one or two more things, but we have automated fashions to do it too. We can see now we've brought the content in. So now the content is in OnBase, and of course we're doing all this stuff behind the scenes in OnBase. Maybe we're updating another third party system. Anything I'm showing here, we have an API behind the scenes to do this, just that. So whether it's an import or a search or a retain or I've just grabbed and collected some data, use that to update another system. We have an API toolkit and library. We've got web services. Uh, many of our, our APIs are RESTful that you know, can do all of the same kind of work a human would do behind the scenes as these applications talk to each other. So now the content's in the system and we want to do something with it. And that's where OnBase sends a notification. And it could be a status update, it could be more. So I click on this link, I'm going to pop open in a web browser the ability to make the decision. But we also have an opportunity to bring the decision-making power right into Outlook itself. And now you see here, the resume and the cover letter that I just imported have now been associated to the application that Sam has filled out online. So we're building this little case, this collection, this record, this file of information about our entity all the time behind the scenes. We're keeping it up to date and we're letting people know what's happening and enabling them to make a decision. So this little email right here, this was sent by OnBase to let someone know status, we received it, we're processing it, or in this case, you have something to do. So maybe we want to hire Sam Hastings. So Sam is applying to be an entry-level developer. He's right out of school, computer science major. Um, Logan, what should we pay him? Annual salary. Just uh, how many thousands of dollars a year? You give me any number. There's no right or wrong answer. A million dollars. A million dollars? Yeah, we're talking about 500,000. All right, 500,000 dollars. <laughs> wow, I'm going back to school. <laughs> You'll notice here, though, I'm just entering this value. You know, there's no formatting behind the scenes and you know it's like the name of our recruiter here and behind the scenes on base is composing the offer letter it doesn't matter if it's a contract or a piece of correspondence or a receipt of a sale or an onboarding of a new customer or vendor there's all types of communications that have to happen all the time 
This particular on-base tool, which we affectionately refer to as document composition, can actually grab data from on-base, from third-party applications. So anything else you may have that has data in it, we can grab data from there too. Remember, you know, we got on-base in the middle, and then we've got all these applications around, so we're grabbing data from all these places. On-base has some info. You saw me enter some stuff. It pulls all that together. It's like mail merge on steroids, and it composes this letter. Now it can be in Word, it could be a PDF, it could be a TIFF image, but now we've got consistency, we've got branding, it's done some formatting and some highlighting, it's got today's date. This came from OnBase, from the application that he filled out, the email that we imported, even inserted our signature for our user that we have stored. So every single OnBase user that you have here at the auto auction, we can store a signature for them in OnBase. Maybe they already have one, they can sign. We can all go into our user options and have a signature for ourselves to apply. But you'll notice here, this is just a Word document, right inside of OnBase, I can make edits. At this moment, maybe I've made my edits, maybe not, it doesn't matter. The document is saved into OnBase, and maybe we send it out. We also put it in Sam's file so that we have a copy of it. And not only are we keeping the letter, what's a very common application is to also the email that was sent to Sam that it has the offer letter attached. That's sent by OnBase, and we're actually storing that as well so that we have a record of the correspondence, the letter, and the communication that went with it. And you'll notice here on this little task, we even give like a little um, date and time stamp, a little receipt so that we know when the workflow activity uh, was completed. So just to show you some basic search, you know, questions are coming into us all day long. What is the status of this? What are we doing with this? Do you know the update of this? Hey, wanna go to lunch? You know, all those questions that come in critical stuff. And the user has to make a decision or they have to find information. So one of the ways that we can do things in OnBase, let's say Sam calls, maybe he wants more money, he's wondering the status of his application. You know, a user can conduct a search, and we have several ways to do that in OnBase, so I'll show you a few. One is we know we're looking for his application for employment. Here's everybody. I didn't even enter, you know, any keywords, but we can see all of the different types of metadata that we have, keywords that we can search on. We can even do a full text search that's like Google. We have little sticky notes that we can put on documents in OnBase, just like you might add a post-it, and the content of those notes is searchable too. We can have security on them also. So here I have my huge list, just like you would in Excel. I'll pull this up a little bigger. I'm trying to keep an eye on my resolution here. Um, you know, we can sort in ascending or descending order. A user can modify exactly what they want this to look like. Maybe I'm going to just type at the top with filters. And here is Sam's application. This is a, a Unity form. This is an electronic form posted to a publicly facing website that someone built designed, configured, without knowing a single line of code. Now all of the checks and balances of this is required and we have a drop down here and maybe there's a signature and an attachment, all of that is built into the form. All of those checks and balances without having to know how to write a single line of code. So we can leave all the API coding and programming to the technical folks and a business analyst type user can begin to design and configure some of these forms. And if you do know how to program, you know, even better, these will be that much easier for you. So here we have our application for employment and we see the cover letter and the resume associated with today's date. These things got associated or cross-referenced or related automatically simply because they all have the same employee ID, customer number, applicant number, student ID, project ID, whatever unique value will keep them related. And then we can pull up these related documents, look at the whole picture, and we're good to go. You'll notice here down at the bottom, so this is on the application, here's an example of that sticky note. And I could add another electronic note, or you know, we have a whole library up here of different things you can do. You can stamp something, you can circle it, you can draw an arrow. You can even create your own custom notes that all have individual levels of privacy. And sometimes there's so many notes that we even have an additional filter for the notes themselves as you know, things are happening. Here's our cross-references. This is our metadata, so the same kind of stuff that we saw in the email and attachment. And then lastly, we have our conversations. These are collaborative discussions about content in OnBase. Should we hire him? Should we not? I don't know. What do you think? This was missing. We need to find this. Now that conversation, which was formerly happening in email, disconnected from Sam's application, is now brought right inside alongside the transaction. And so when we talk about digital transformation, this is an easy way 
Let the email be the notification and let all of the content remain in an application like OnBase and then we can surface this through Outlook or SAP or Workday or Oracle or whatever systems you're using. So that's one example of our search. And I'm right back in Outlook after I find the information that I need and answer the question and make my little updates. So we talked about folders earlier. Well, yeah, I'll show you custom queries in a minute. We talked about folders earlier. Here we have our employee folders. So we have an opportunity to find uh, a folder for a particular customer or a vendor or an account. You'll notice here that we don't yet have a folder for Sam Hastings. He has not yet uh, you know, accepted our offer letter, let's say. But I'll show you what one looks like for employee Andrew Lincoln. Maybe we decide, you know, I only want to create a folder for an employee. I don't want one for every applicant. These are all the different documents, forms, letters, videos, audio files, whatever we may have, all connected in this folder. You'll see here that we have, you know, three subfolders all created automatically. And we have the documents themselves, you know, organized in a predefined manner. And then we even have you know, opportunities when we identify that something is missing. We have the performance review. So you kind of get the general sense of what the employee folder looks like. Well, these folders can be triggered to be created whenever it makes sense for the business process. You know, once everything's complete, midway through the process, once an activity has taken place, and everything will flow in there accordingly. So maybe our trigger is he accepts the offer letter. Maybe our trigger is we create a new form. It doesn't matter. To show you, you know, another example, I'm going to grab Sam's offer letter. So this is the letter, the word letter that we just created. Got my filter for Sam on there. Here's my offer letter. Maybe I want to make some updates to this. You know, Sam, he's a young kid just out of college. All these kids, you know, they're so entitled. Just kidding. <laughs> you can tell I'm all reporting. All right, so. He's a, a, he wants to now be a senior developer. This kid has never worked a day in his life, but we're desperate for people. We're gonna give him a little more money too. We've been authorized to give him 10% more. And I'm gonna save the changes I've made to this offer letter as a revision. So notice I'm editing a Word document inside of OnBase and managing the revision. So I've updated his title and salary. And this is really helpful that you know our HR general has put this in here. And now what OnBase does is instead of that folder that has version one, version two, Colleen's edits, Katie's edits, final copy, updates, we stack them in OnBase all on top of each other. So in a hit list, you're only ever gonna see one document, but you'll see that it has two, three, four, 10, 25 revisions, whatever the case might be. And now I can come over here and look at these two revisions. Here's the one that I created. You can see they're created here seven minutes apart. And I have the comments for the updated one. Any document in OnBase, doesn't matter the file format, can be revised and we'll stack the revisions on top of each other. We can even segment privileges between revisions and versions. So maybe, you know, Cindy and David are passing back and forth the, the new HR policy that's going to go out and then at some point they say this is the final. Maybe they'll PDF it or maybe they'll access privilege just to that final version and not all the drafts really helpful in like a contract scenario is maybe this contract is floating around outside of the organization. We get the copy back before we make that final approval. We want to compare these two revisions to showcase exactly what has changed. So now I can take that original offer letter where I inserted the senior developer and updated the $500,000 to $550,000 and all of that is outlined right here. I can save this comparison document into OnBase, but I can also just generate it anytime I need. So whenever you have a business process that involves revising content in OnBase, know that we keep track of those revisions from a who made what change perspective. We have the ability to compare what has changed at any time, and we stack the revisions on top of each other. So instead of 25 different items in a list and you have no idea which one is the most recent, who made the change, what has changed, we're gonna provide all that information and you know the one that you're opening is always the most recent. So when we go back to the document in a hit list, we only ever see one, but we know that there are two revisions of that content. So now from an on-base perspective, you know, we come back in, we now see that there are two revisions of Sam's offer letter before we even open it. So 
So instead of seeing his offer letter here 10 times, we'll see it once, and we'll see it 10 right on top of it. All right, so back to our folders. I'll show you just one more time. You'll notice that we do not have a folder <coughs> yet for Sam Hastings, but we're gonna create one. And we create one when he accepts our very generous offer and we're ready to onboard him. Onboarding of new employees or new customers is a very popular case management application because there's multiple steps as part of that process. It's documents, it's data, it's back and forth conversations. In our case, I'm gonna fill out an electronic form here from OnBase itself but I'm gonna stay in Outlook while I do it. So anytime there is a request, so customers will sometimes ask me like, we have so much going on, where do I even start? My advice to that is follow the forms. Where is there a form that someone is filling out today? It's paper, it's PDF, it's electronic, but it's going nowhere, it doesn't matter, and start with that. Make the form electronic, put in some checks and balances, let it flow into OnBase, Send people emails that the status has been updated, route it a little bit through workflow, and then worry about transforming it. Start with the process that involves a form, start with the form, automate that process, begin to report on it, and then grow from there. So here we have our employee profile. Now in this case, I'm gonna fill out this form manually. I need new supplies, I wanna request a day off, whatever it is. Oftentimes for our customers, there's another application, in a human capital management system, an HRS application, that is managing the employee record. And that's where we'll take data from that line of business system to create the new record. Or it's vice versa, it's getting created here in OnBase with this form, and then we're gonna send the data to the other system to make the update. So in this case, I'm gonna just fill out the form automatically. You'll notice that I only have to actually enter one value, and I get the rest automatically, because we already know who Sam is and what department he's applied for. And you know, look at this, it even has senior developer. Like it, it knew that we had changed that title as part of the offer letter because Omnis is smart and it's making us smarter because maybe this person didn't even know that that title got changed and now they do. So the submission of this form is gonna be the trigger to create the folder structure. And you know, put HR aside, it doesn't matter what exactly we're talking about. Notice how this folder is created consistently with those of the other folders. Here's that application online, the interview guide, and here's my favorite, here's that offer letter. We pulled them all together. And now we're not creating duplicate copies, we're simply dynamically querying on base, what do we have for Sam Hastings, and pull it in. You'll notice that we don't have a performance review folder yet for Sam because he hasn't been reviewed, he hasn't even started yet maybe. And that will all get created in time. But as new documents come in that we need, you know, we can bring them into the system. I could go into my email, you know, at any time, and maybe Sam Hastings has sent us the I-9 form, and we can very easily bring it in. So, I mean, it, you know, I mean, OnBase is so versatile that I could just drag directly from my email and pop it right into OnBase and it's smart enough to know what this could potentially be. And one you know, value, all I said was, yep, this is the I-9, you know, and it's grabbing some of the rest of these keyword values without me having to do any data entry, and it's gonna put it right in the folder. Now I'm still working through Sam's folder, and I've also looked at his driver's license, and maybe I wanna also sign the form. You know, so anything that we would do on a piece of paper with a pen, we can do electronically in Onbase. I can sign something, I can draw on it, I can add a sticky note, I can staple it together, I can put it in a folder, I can send it out, I can share it with you. Anything that is possible with paper, we have digitally transformed and made better in Onbase. So I, you know, as Colleen have reviewed this, I'm gonna apply my signature, right onto the document, you'll see that it you know, puts on the date and time stamp. I'm gonna save it. In this particular case, it's gonna permanently burn that signature into the document, and it's gonna create a revision. So just like I showed the revision of the offer letter, which is what we always think of in terms of editing content, images can be edited too. There's damage to a car, I wanna mark where that damage took place, and I can make edits to that. 
I need to sign form, and then you need to sign the form. All of those can become you know, revisions of the content. And as I've worked through this folder, and now you know, I'm right back in Outlook. Our final search here is that of you know, what, what we call a custom query. It's simply a, a predefined search. And as I enter the employee ID or the name for Sam Hastings, you know, it's going to show me what we have predefined to present. Maybe that's 100 documents, maybe that's 10, maybe that's two. In this particular case, we don't have all the applicant documents behind this search because that's just clutter. We only want to show the employee documents. Oh, I could do another one maybe for this employee. You know, he's got a few more things because he's been here a little bit longer. So we're bringing in different documents related to the search. You'll notice here that we also have you know, a full text search that we can combine where we can make the search look a lot like Google. Now every word within every document becomes searchable. Maybe I'm looking for a candidate and I don't know that Sam Hastings has applied for a job. I just know that I'm looking for someone with experience in, with dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics, let's say. This is the resume that we just imported for Sam Hastings, what, 10, 15 minutes ago. Behind the scenes, OnBase has OCR this image file, made all of this text searchable, and it's hit highlighting the search right here. And then connected to this, of course, are the cover letter and the employment application. Maybe those documents don't have the word dynamics in them, but they're presenting them to the user anyway, because now we have a possible candidate. It's almost like, you know, when you're shopping on Amazon or anything, really, and it's like, users who purchased this also are interested in this, this, and this. And you're like, guilty as charged. I have to complete this outfit. I'll take it all. <laughs> you know, same thing. OnBase is helping make the user smarter by providing them information that they maybe don't even need to know to look for or exist. And so now here's our related customer documents based on the fact that this one contained the word or the phrase that we need. We have the history of any document always available to us behind the scenes, a view, a keyword change, an edit, an update. We have the ability to start a conversation and subscribe to discussions. I mean, like, you know, you don't, unless you put it in the context of something else, it's almost like you can't even always see how ridiculous our day-to-day -day life sometimes is. Content is over here, but we're like having an email conversation about it. On Facebook, if I post a photo and then you comment on it somewhere else unrelated to the photo, that would like make no sense. You need to see the photo and then right below it, it says, boy, the kids look really cute. It looks like you're having a great vacation, whatever. Can you imagine if that was happening somewhere else? I mean, that's what Outmace does. It brings those comments, that conversation, that content, all related into one place. And when you need to print something or send it to the cloud for a signature or to share base for some collaboration, it's all available directly from OnBase. Uh, the same reporting that we showed earlier is all available directly from Outlook. And lastly, I'll end with you know, one of the ways that you know, I use OnBase extensively, we use OnBase extensively at Highland, is the policy and procedure administration. Now, all of the policies, all the procedures are available to me directly from Outlook to access at any time. Whether it's, and typically it will start just like anything else. New policy has been updated. So it'll be updated in all the ways that I just showed. You click a button, the employees get an email, right? The content is talking, you've got something new. I come in, I can acknowledge the content. I'm saying yes to all these statements. Maybe it's asking me a couple quiz questions. Maybe I'm re-entering my password. We're tracking all of this. So this wants my password, like that extra step that says, yes, I reviewed it, I saw it. I have this document to me as a user available at any time to reference. The administration on the back end knows who got the policy, when they looked at it, when they acknowledged it, what departments are compliant, which are not, and it understands that different users have varied requirements based on their department, their role, that kind of thing. It's all in one place. Now, if I request a, a time off you know, at Highland, I fill out a form. That routes behind the scenes and workflow to my manager who approves that time off. You know, we're integrating with other systems to update the, you know, the time off system that ultimately manages our payroll. The manager's getting a notification saying, do you approve or deny this request? It comes back to me, it's talking, letting me know your you know, Friday afternoon has been approved and it actually even has like a little iCal calendar entry that I can add to my notification that I can mark 
as time off. Any particular questions on anything that you've seen? Any comments? Anyone want a yoga stretch band or a deck of cards? <laughs> At this point, I'm just handing them out. <laughs> Could you give us about say, five minutes on what it takes to define and build the workflow or sure. a process like that? Yeah, but typically what we'll, we'll say with the workflow it is a couple things. You know, you're going to look at your process today, you're going to map it out on a whiteboard. It's very, if this, then do this. So if the application is for this, go here. If it's for that, go here. And I'm creating, you know, in our little configuration, these little queues where the decisions are being made. So I'm in the first step queue. Is the application fully completed? Yes, route it up. No, send an email back to the person that sent it in. Say we're missing these three things. Is the application for new hire? Okay, send it here. Is it for an intern position? Okay, send it over here because we manage those different. And we have rules and actions out of the box that allow you to configure all of that logic without having to write any code. Advice that we'll give you know, with regards to workflow is, of course, don't automate a bad process. Think about ways that you can improve the process as you go. And also, not to get caught up on every single possible exception that may occur, but to build the base of your workflow for 80% of the time. 80% of the time, these are the different things that may happen in the workflow. This or this, this and this, this or this. But yeah, 20% of the time are gonna be these crazy exceptions that somebody with some knowledge really needs to know and work those items. So what we'll say is, you know, automate for 80%. Now you're automating, even when there is human involvement, for 80% of the time, and then everything else to start. So you're not building all this logic for this 20%. Send them to an exceptions handling queue, that your, you know, your knowledge worker is going to work and define. And we build it all in what we call OnBase Studio. And that's the same place that, you know, you can build some forms. That's where you'll do your web services. That's where you'll design your case management screens. And it, and it really, you know, if you're technically savvy and, and you understand how, you know, a relational database works behind the scenes and how the business process should flow and what some of that logic is, you know, you can build it fairly quickly, and, and of course there's a learning curve to the more you build it, the easier they get, the more you kind of work out some of that. Once you've got one built and you've got processes in yep. flight, can you uh -huh. modify what all other processes are? you got stuff in flight on the workflow? Yes, so you can decide, you know, do I want to, when, when do I want these new changes to take effect? We even have some opportunities, depending on how you want to run it, where sometimes IT makes the change, other times the business user may actually have a privilege. They're not going into studio, they're not going behind the scenes, but we actually provide them. This is a big differentiator of our workflow, what we call workflow management. And it actually provides an interface for that business user to modify some of the logic. And what I mean by that is not all this like if then behind the scenes, but maybe our thresholds have changed. It used to be if the purchase was over $500, then it needed approval. Well now, if it's over $250, it needs approval. And the user themselves, you know, the, the head of the accounting department or whatever, they can make that little logic change on the front end. Something drastically needs to change with the flow, that would come back to IT to make that change. And then anything that's new will come in and, and follow this new flow. Or any new initiation. New, or let's say you make a modification to something down here. This item up here, when it gets there, oh, will okay. get that new logic. Yeah. So, for your exception handling, can you say, I guess you set up rules like if, if it has this exception, send it to this person or this queue or whatever. Yeah. whatever. Yes. And, and typically then that person's getting an email notification, or maybe they're like, there's too many, I don't want an email notification, send me a daily summary, or I'm just going to know to go check once a day and see if there's anything new. So there's all different ways to handle it. So the, the on base can actually do the summary? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it really depends on volume. You know, if it's every once in a while, you probably want an email every time right. you get one. Right. If there's always going to be something, maybe there's no email. They just know every day to go check. It's so lots of different ways. Other questions? Comments? Anything else you'd like to see? All right, very good. Thank you guys all so much for your time and attention today. And thank you for coming together. And I am serious.